Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Yeah. You do that, huh? Mm-hmm. Is that an American You don't do that? No. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. when I went to Montana, uh, did that for the first... In Jeju, and that's the first time I'd ever seen how anybody long, do how it. How many years ago was like that? Like 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was, I used to, I was a bartender back in the States, and that uh -huh. was always, we did, when you do that, you're cheering for the person that poured your beer. It's a little weird. But that's that's what I thought yeah. was for the bar. That's it's for the not bar. the same thing. But it's just, maybe, I now it's just a habit. I just do it. Uh -huh. How many of you guys out there do it? Let us know. Let any us Canadians? Know. Any Irishmen? Any... <laughs> Yeah, well, Jeju though country. they don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. I'm sure. No, we do no. it. In my, I always do it with my friends you at bars. The Jeju. Oh, yeah. The people okay. don't really do. So we're back. The Jeju people. We're not really one of them. Hey. <laughs> we we're back. To, <laughs> we took a two month hiatus because of my fault. Because I went to Canada with family. It was family. needed, not anybody's fault. It was needed. We needed a break. Yeah. Yeah. Long, yeah. Yeah. Did you have good Christmas? Good winter? Did Very you get quiet. a break? Very quiet. COVID. Still on Jeju, uh, still on restrictions. So yeah. nine p.m., four people. You know, it wasn't. It was lovely, but and, and New Year's know. and so forth. Yeah, very quiet. Yeah, yeah, very quiet. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I drank, but that's about you it. know the like the difference between being in Canada and being here mm -hmm. is astronomical, night and day, right? Astronomical because of the amount of stress. It's so yeah. much more stressful in Canada than it oh, is. Oh, is in it? Here. So much more. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that. It yeah, just seems like life is. Normal for all my friends back home and for, yeah. No, no, it's, well, it might well, be. Well, they might be acting yeah, like American it's, too, it's right? Americans. But like Americans. our rules were changing all the time, especially with the Omicron yeah. just going yes. up at that point yeah, in yeah, December. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to change our like rules, while, uh, quarantine rules oh. while in country. Oh, so my wife yes. had to quarantine for five days after arriving yes. there, yes. which wasn't the case when, uh, when, when I when off. I got yep. there, yes, right? exactly, exactly. But the, stressful, man, for the travelers. Super I feel bad. stressful. So many people, most of you mm. listening, actually, I think um, a lot of you went home for Christmas, and even whilst home, mm. the rules were changing coming back to Jeju. So it's all right. over the world. Well, it's just like, Whoa, okay, what's the latest? You know, we had to quarantine when we came back here for ten days, of course, which wasn't course. so bad, but. But you at least it's, got to do it at home. And I'm that very was nice. fortunate. Mm -hmm. But it's so mm -hmm. restrictive. Mm -hmm. Like the app that you have to download onto your phone. Oh, is it? I mean, I've okay. heard, I know what it is, but yeah. So, so I have to, I work from home and I sit at my desk yeah. and I put my phone down beside me. <laughs> and it's probably like, what are you doing? Yeah, because oh, I no. get a message that says I haven't moved in such a long time. So they time. think you're like lying or something. You have to check in okay. and you have to text somebody three times a day with your temperature and stuff. And I started like building up a relationship with this guy. <laughs> but like, like, hey buddy, how yeah, are you doing today? It's, it, it was just... That would not fly in a lot of no, countries. No, no, It's no. really intrusive. Yes. And I'm not against it, but like I, I did find it kind of annoying. And for 10 frustrating days, Frustrating yeah. for 10 days. On one hand, I think, yeah, it's annoying, but at least you're at home. Because before, you didn't even get that choice, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Korea's seen like a flow, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, at least you get to be home. But right, but you get the app, but they also give you tons of food. Yes, you do. And they pick up your garbage for you. And, and they do all these things and for there you, right? You go. There's a, Lovely. There's a, a give and go with yeah, it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is one of the biggest issues that we always talk about when it comes to living in Jeju? The change is on the island, right? Or is it... Uh, just generally, the, not, you not said, COVID. What are one of the things that you bitch about the most, Alexis? <laughs> In the, generally, the, the overgrowth yeah. of the island. Okay, you know? what else? What do you? Uh, what, what do you talk to me every day? Cars. Okay, let's talk about that. Then. <laughs> so, the reason why I bring it up is because um, I used to tell my wife before we went back uh, that, like, oh, car driving will be so much better when we get to Canada. Yes. You know, like yes. people will drive. They'll be, they'll obey be normal. The rules. It'll be. They'll be doing things that are worldwide recognized. Not. Not so much. True. I think oh we my. look back on our old like countries with rose-covered glasses, oh, rose-tinted really? glasses, because I got there and I just ate my words because <laughs> all the time someone would go through a red light, someone like, would be doing the, something that they would do here, not to we necessarily just... such a degree. Okay. And I, th I think okay. I figured out that there is a difference though. Here they break the laws casually. They just casually do it. Okay. Where in Canada... The driving laws. Yeah. The driving laws. Yeah, not yeah. like murder and things like that. Yeah, the driving <laughs> laws. Like going through red lights. Mm -hmm. It's more casual. In Canada, they blitz through it. They There's this intent. There's this knowledge that they're doing oh, something wrong. And they still, And okay. then they... 
like there's this Ooh. intent that I thought was interesting. Which I mean, I haven't different. been home in a long time, but the mm. last time I was home, I drove in four different states because I was a busy lady. Right. And a hundred percent, it was pleasant. Pleasant driving. Were there no versus, people? No, there are people, but I don't know. Maybe I was just in a good mood. I hadn't been home. It right. was sunny in Colorado. I don't know, mm. but I definitely didn't have the level of road rage that I have here. I also didn't drive. I forgot oh, to get well, my. I, I, no, but I had other people driving with me. Yes, so but I was that's observing. Different. <laughs> I you, forgot to get my wheel. international driver's license oh, when I went home. Damn, that's so, like three months back home and no two, license. Two months. Yeah, but that's yeah. pretty inconvenient. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Especially when you live. In the countryside where my parents live. And you okay, can't well, go we're going to have to agree so. to disagree. Again, uh-huh. though, I haven't been home in a really long time, but we're going to have to disagree. I still, mm. on a regular basis, someone still pulls out smack in front of me mm. when there's not nary a car behind me. So we're just going to... So when it comes to driving, we're talking about that. The They recently came out with the new numbers for the top most five popular tourist de- destinations on Jeju. Oh, Visited Jimmy. by car. That's okay, what I not thought was by interesting. Person, so. Not not by individual, not by getting there by okay. bus or anywhere okay. or by so occupation. We're counting cars, but by cars oh, this is gonna going be cool. there. This is going to be cool. Hit us. So what what, what do you think with the first uh, one? Uh, okay, 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 okay. For, uh, Sunrise Peak is going to be. I don't In know there. if that's going to be the first one, but I'll okay. put it in my top five. I'm going to say which beach am I going? I'm not cheating. I yeah. swear. Um, I'm going to say, oh gosh, Jungmoon or Hamdok. Uh-huh. I'm going to mm, okay, and then I'm going to go with. Uh, uh, you hit me. Naria Beach is on oh, this surprising. list. The first one we is Sunset Nature Ball. We both just said oh, did, did you, you notice that? Nary? I said something about the car. Of, what, oh. Do we even use that in our real life? No, Anyways, I'm let's going keep... to now. But <laughs> there is not a beach. Okay, so on not this a beach. List. So Sunrise Peak for sure. Okay, Hala Mountain, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say some random Orem. That for what maybe it's a blog. You're completely off. Oh my god. Yeah, you're completely really? off. So Sunset National Bank is number one. Yes. That's the number one. Well, I don't know if I should be proud of More than yes. three hundred thousand cars during the year. And the data That's is not a lot. It's not for too the bad. whole year. Yeah, it's okay. but Considering COVID. Interest- oh yeah. COVID. And uh, this was do- this is an estimation done with like T Mobile data from like the okay. navigations of the cars. I wanna think the uh, rental cars, but I I couldn't nail that down. That's interesting. Okay. Number two? I just cheated. I just looked and I was Udo. Completely, I'm shocked. Do people take their? I what do. A off, what a place uh, to take your car. Okay, though. it's well, so listen, small. I know, but listen, I, the last three times I've gone, I've taken my car either because I had to, you know, there was a volleyball net or there was coolers or something. But also, it's kind of fun to be in a car on Udo. Is it? A little bit because you could, you, I go places more than I go if I'm on that little scooter that oh, you can sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, but that's so shocking. Third. I'm not going to pronounce this right because I have the English down here, not the Korean. Oh. Saryani Sar- Forest Path? Saryani Forest Path? That's that huge. So when you get, when you start driving through, mm-hmm. the parking lot Driving starts, through what? Uh, the mountain road. Okay. Uh, the parking lot starts so far down and it's just this long, mm-hmm. narrow parking lot. And there's like four, I think, and there's like four coffee trucks. Selling. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So Udo is 230,000. Okay. Saryani Forest Path was 171,000. Okay. Almost 172. For Manjungu Cave at 78,000. Stop, 000. really? Yep. Oh, that's ridiculous. You can only kind of get there by cave, though. Well, but by cave? By car. Cheers! John, by car. Yeah, yeah, because it's really unfortunate, the bus. <laughs> yeah. by cave. But that's interesting, okay. And I was not impressed. Bajaram Forest at 71,000. Oh, that's the forest that has the yeah. parking lot. And October actually saw the most amount of cars to <gasps> these destinations in total okay. for almost 150,000. There you go, folks. We're back with a we're back with a banging, you know, <laughs> Car Daryl Daryl um, yeah. statistics. Yeah. We're, we're back. We're back in full force. If you guys I like numbers, let us. us know. If you don't, also, <laughs> but let we're us doing. Know. We're never gonna not do numbers. <laughs> I don't care if you don't like numbers. That's yeah. this stuff is fascinating. All right. Well, let's go off now to see uh, Jeju Dialect Corner with Ji Young Han. Excellent. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, gather around one and all for the time has come once again for one's horizon to be split asunder and in that place where we felt empty, knowledge will fill and whole we will wow. become for possibly the first time in our lives and our prodigious and prestigious teacher, Ju Young Han, imparts upon us the language of the forebears of the land we call home. <laughs> in our internationally acclaimed Jeju Dialect Corner. Thank you for being here again. 
I do like, we can actually, actually, it's truthful to say internationally acclaimed because people from all over now are listening to the section. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Wow. I like it. Well, hi. 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 <laughs> it's been a while. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy New Year. All the good stuff. Yeah. Happy New Year. Say hey, book, mani, mani, paraseo. Mani, paraseo. Somebody's been practicing. All right. Some, someone's been forced to practice at <laughs> whip and cat nine. So now what are we learning this week on Jeju Dialect Corner? Oh, so like, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, Alexis was drinking uh, beer from She's Magpie. <laughs> yeah. From Magpie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Magpie. Uh, yeah. It was... Uh, like one of my favorite words from you know like in in Jeju dialect and I figured like she doesn't you know had no idea no clue yeah. you know yeah she, yeah she, she has no clue you know on you know about like what it means mm -hmm. so I told her about it and she really liked this so I, I did thought, you know maybe maybe you know we we I I could teach you uh -huh. um yeah that word and I thought it was really cool. So do it. So what, what's the word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's chondai. 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 Yes. Chondai. Dai. Dai. Yeah. Chondai. Chondai. Oh, like with the the yes. two consonants. Yeah. Two. Da, da. Yes. Uh, okay. Chondai. No. Dai. Dai. I. It's so difficult <laughs> yeah. for me to pronounce. Yeah. Well, listen Chondai. to the whole thing first. Listen to you. Wait, is that the Chon whole thing? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And, and <laughs> one more time. Chondai. <laughs> and what is, what is what does this word mean? So um so it's um well it literally means like a kid, you know, a kid from uh the countryside or a kid living in the countryside. Nice. So oh. the chon means the country. And die means, you know, a kid. Right. So, yeah, you know, together, you yeah. know, like uh, Chon Dai is a kid living in the countryside, but oh. you cannot use da only die, you know, the word separ separately. Oh. You know, like uh, <laughs> meaning yeah. uh, a kid. because It has uh, to be together. Yeah, it has to be together. Okay. But the thing is, I personally would use four syllable words instead of chon dai mm -hmm. i used to say chon et dai chon et dai yeah chon et dai so okay. et is preposition so like huh. in you know so oh. in the countryside okay you know, in the country. okay so a kid I, in the country i would say that yeah okay. I would was that say a dialect that, thing oh, is that like because you're on um, the western side of the island you know the thing is like uh so technically <laughs> technically i wouldn't say it's a dialect mm. but you know the way uh people pronounce it so like chon dai is phonetically written word uh -huh. right so so you know like a uh, dai comes from i you know uh, I, like baby yeah mm -hmm. baby mm -hmm. kid mm -hmm. but like People from Jeju, you know, like they pronounce it as dai, not chon ai, but chon dai. Okay. Oh, really? I never yeah. heard, that's really so interesting. really interesting. Yes. And yeah. also. And why did this so word I, grace your beer can? <laughs> well, because Magpie has a very, not to, not unless you want to sponsor us, Magpie. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to, but they have a very have delicious so, beer. Stocks? Well, mm -hmm. we should find out. <laughs> we should get some. We should at least get some beer for this. Yeah, I'm going to propose. But they have a really tasty beer called Country Folk. Mm -hmm. So um, I had looked at the uh, picture and I had posted something and, and um, Juju was like, hey, you know what that is? Actually, that's Jeju dialect. I was like, oh, no kidding. That's so cool. Uh -huh. um, and it, yeah, so on their beer can. But but you said it, it, it's spelled a little bit differently on mm -hmm. their beer can, right? Yeah, or so I... I use I personally use four syllable words. Yes, but like on saying. the beer okay. cat, it's mm -hmm. like three syllables. And right, right. also, mm -hmm. if you are from the city, uh -huh. you can say she dai. She is yeah. She is you know as in city yep. hall. You know yep. she yeah. is she chong. Yeah, she yeah city. So she she dai. 
Oh. It's, I'm yeah, I'm from the city. Or I'm a city living folk. Living in the city. Yeah, yes. That is a cool one. Say <laughs> that to us one more time. We got just two lessons here. Do that one one more time. Shietai. Shietai. So it's would this this question coming out left field? Would you yeah. would somebody use this as a door like as mm-hmm. an insult yeah. to call an adult? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Uh oh, maybe, you know, like when you use chontai, you know, like mm. uh um like for example. Like, you know the word juju, you know the word like redneck from the states mm, is this no. kind of on that level of like kind of putting someone down or it's just simply acknowledging that they live in the country uh-huh. do you know what i'm saying i'm making fun of it yeah. not yeah. really insulting but like okay. for example like okay. i i used to have really really dark skin when i was like not dark you know like brown skin right 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 when i was young so like you know people can you know could recognize me as Chun Dai okay. immediately because okay. I was like running outside in, you know, in, the, in the ocean, you know, sea and stuff uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. So, oh, fun. you know, like just making fun of it. Yeah. Mm. But I would think. someone be insulted if if we were, if Daryl or I was to just say and be like, oh, you must, yeah. you, you are, you know, would that be an insult? Yeah. If, you know, no, I, no, no, not that I know. Mm. I, yeah. Okay. But also, okay. like, all the people, you know, like for example, my grandmothers and, you know, they use that word as like just acknowledging someone, you know, oh, okay. she's she dai or she's uh, dai, okay. you know, things like that. Okay. So, That's really cool. I like this. And yeah. honestly, we just got two little lessons after yeah, that. We, so we're going to have to split them up. So we how stole about, it from you. How about if before we end the lesson, if uh, Juju, if you don't mind, can you mm-hmm. do the two words slowly so we can, you know, do our usual Instagram post? Can you do both of them? Yeah. English yeah. and Korean, please. Right? Oh, no, just Korean. So stuff. just Korean. Sorry. Just Korean. We haven't been doing this for a while, folks. Okay. Chonetai. Chietai. Excellent. Perfect. I like That's that. great. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you so much again. This was a great lesson, as usual. As always. Thank you for too. gracing our you. presence with yours. <laughs> and uh, until next time. Mwah. See you again. Ciao. Bye. Well, hey oh <laughs> that was another good lesson. Mm-hmm. Chuchu is always so prepared, isn't she? I'm, I love it. She's Much, just like she puts us to shame. She, she really does because I'm just I was holding the beer can. I'm like, whoa, what is this? And right. then she's like, I got a I got a lesson for you. So yeah, that was good. Yeah, that always good. always enjoyable. And we'll we'll post that and uh, I'll show I'll sh- on one on the post that we do. I'll take a picture of the beer can so people can see really what I'm talking about as well. Yeah, magpie, give us beer, <laughs> please. Oh, please. or Jeju, Jeju, just anyone, just beer. give us beer. beer. Just give us beer. Okay. Well, beer. I mean, come on, beer. beer. Um. So what do you got? What what more? Okay, well, what more <laughs> things you got? So for I came me? across this thing that I thought was. Uh, we talked about drones before. We've talked about yep. the technology of yep. Jeju. This is a little bit far out there. I had to actually like crowdsource people to explain to you what this is. So, would you? If you have to. Okay, I had I'm to, nervous. I'm really nervous because I'm really not going to know. Okay, what, let's go. What would, would you like to own a piece of property in Udo or AWOL? Yeah. I wish I had bought one when I moved here 10 years sure. ago. It was the stupidest mistake of my life not doing that. Yeah, but that's yeah. Why are you asking? Well, because uh, as JG yeah. podcast, me, you, and JG, oh, we're, buy, buy, we're buying property. All right. We're becoming real estate Thanks. moguls. <laughs> now, um, moving on from stocks, maybe digital uh, oh. re- new, uh, real estate moguls. Because how do you buy what Trump? Uh, Trump Triumph <laughs> X, which you have to listen to how they describe this country. It's okay, a cross-chain based decentralized NFT platform developer. What the heck? <laughs> right, that's you lost me. I, I was lost at Triumph. These, okay, the Triumph X is a cross chain ba- chain based decentralized NFT platform developer, and they signed a contract right. like this week with Drone Orange Co. to establish a hyper realism metaverse <laughs> ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a bunch of words. That is just, just a, bunch a bunch of words. words right? But I know Meta, Meta, that's like Spider Man, right? That's like Metaverse. The, the yeah, right? Metaverse is like Spider Man. Yes. So there we go. So, okay. So, what they did is that they contracted this drone company okay. to take like scan Jeju Island. 
Okay. Right? So that's what this company was already doing. Okay. And they're going to take that information and turn that into a digital sandbox of Jeju where people will be able to buy places of land, virtual land, what as are NFTs. You talking about? <laughs> Why would you want to do that? That's what I said. Why? I tried to contact these people to get more information because apparently they said that they already have reservations booked for Udo and AWOL. That's why I mentioned those two places. People want to buy virtual property on Why these... those two places? Because wouldn't you want to buy your home? That, I, that's what, or, exactly what I told right? you. I'm like, can we buy wait, our wait, house? Wait. Okay, let's just slow down. Did they decline an interview? I can't get a hold of them. We got to get a hold of them. I really want to know. They had this really fancy website. First of where, all, you and I don't even understand NFTs, right? Or NTFs. Or non- uh, NF non fungible tokens. So a fungible I mean, I thing is Twitter. like money, right? right. You so can it's touch all it. it's no, it's all the same. Oh, so like a dollar is a dollar is a dollar, or okay. like a hundred pennies is a dollar, right? So you can change them; they're all valued the same. Oh, non okay. fungible, fungible tokens are where they're the value is different. So, um, that. So the values of the different properties are different, right? Okay. And I, I, I want, to, I want to talk to like we every we need to talk to is supposed to be exactly this. like Jeju, and you can buy the space. And when I asked, what do, what, what, what do we do with it? So I asked Joey, who we've had oh, Joey? on the friend of oh, the show, Joey. Joey. <laughs> Joey knew. Yeah, I asked. I, I crowdsourced. I'm like, does okay. anybody know what any of these words mean? Okay, so what did Joey they, say? Well, they said it's a it's going to be like a crypto sandbox. But the okay. big advantage here is they are talking about it is that they actually have scanned the real Udo, not designed an imaginary place. Okay. So you'll be able okay. to like advertise things on this plot of land that you buy. This imaginary land, which is real, based on a real place. So maybe if so, we so, can so, get. So, like Wait, so virtual if, reality, uh -huh. you wear like a helmet or something, and like walk around and get a coffee oh. from a Is, Starbucks that you buy a franchise, <laughs> virtual franchise of. Oh, on this, I'm, I'm making up the Starbucks, but okay, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 just, but the potentials of what this is. But you wouldn't go on Udo and see our advertisement. You had to be in this. We would have to put it there. We would have to buy the land. Literally to put on the, Udo. No, 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 no. In the metaverse. Ooh, we're showing some. Ignorance here. Okay. Oh, so oh, much. Oh, so unfair. much. I have no, okay, so did you ask anyone else? Or is uh, that all well, Joey said? No, no, Joey, that's said? what Joey said. Okay. Some people said it's a scam. Um, and I don't know. Scammy, no, but, it's just. But it is on Twitter. People People are trying. This is new breaking ground. Trying oh, to do why? new stuff. I, I, you know what I saw? And I'll keep it quick. But I saw people have now owned memes so they're asking people that have these uh, uh, photos as their profile to take them down mm -hmm. because they own it well Isn't that's that oh, that that's not the same is thing? the perfect segue to our next guest oh okay well then oh to our next guest to our guest oh this sounds this is a cliffhanger oh okay, okay. okay. let's see what happens when you live in south korea whether it be the northern tip of paju or the southern border of Sogipo here in jeju North Korea is a constant hum that doesn't interrupt your day, but sometimes loudens until it is all you hear. In the last three weeks, North Korea has launched five weapons tests, including that of what it claims to be a hypersonic weapons program. However, the international community, and including human rights groups, as well as the United States, accuses the Kim regime of funding its weapons development program with money that should be going to the people of North Korea, the majority of whom struggle through poverty under the oppressive dictatorship. About 30,000 have settled in, uh, from North Korea in South Korea, but many face hardships here as well and seek refuge in third countries and occasionally, as seen earlier this month, or try to return to their northern uh, native side of the border. Today, to talk to us about North Korean refugees and our work to help them is a former intern with the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, an activist North Korean refugees, and North Koreans in, uh, generally, and a reporter who has written for the Korean Times and HuffPost on topics from North Korea and Hanji paper dolls <laughs> to Pokemon. And she's a friend of mine, Rachel Stein. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I think this is my <laughs> no, first podcast. From no not, way. I think it is. Yeah, That's I think this exciting. is my first one. And that was quite the introduction. Did I get uh, anything well, wrong? Actually, oh. I was not an internet the North Korea Database Center, but I did work at Liberty in North Korea in Manhattan during my undergrad years. Like, Why are not... you listed there, though? At the committee, 
the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea. It says you were an intern for the fall of 2014. Oh my goodness, it's, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's an error of some kind. I pictures there and everything. Oh, your pictures Are there. Are you serious? I confirmed it. It's not like-, like Put it on your resume, oh Rachel. Put God. it on your resume. I, you know, maybe You come it's to me when board. you want to learn about stuff about yourself. <laughs> Anyways. It's it, in a parallel universe. I was there. <laughs> wow, that's super weird. I'll have to show that to you. Yeah. That's interesting. That's oh a lot. Goodness. So Rachel, that's quite a that's quite a list of things. When when did that all start? When did your interest in North Korea start? Like what year? Mm. Where? Uh, so this would have been about 2010. Okay. I actually started getting involved in North Korean human rights activism. Um, and that has a whole backstory to it. But I, I was an undergraduate student in Manhattan studying at the New School. So I had my little dormitory and I was broke with all my friends and, you know, living on a meal plan. And uh, we used to have Documentary Friday in my teeny mm. tiny 13th Street dormitory. And we always used to all like cram in there. And we every Friday we would watch some crazy unhinged documentary. Um, you know, so we did like, I think there was one called like Food Inc. That was oh, yeah. popular. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. We, yeah. Or that was like 2010 sort of stuff that was going on. And one of my friends who was a Korean American said, uh, oh, I have I have one about a, a country my grandfather is from. Oh. it's it's uh it's like hell and I was like oh yeah okay whatever what is it and he's like oh it's uh and then he, it was about North Korea and I was just you know having gone through American public schools I was vaguely aware of like the Korean war and whatnot mm -hmm. you know I was mm -hmm. what like 18 19 I don't remember <laughs> mm. um, at this point but you know, I was like, okay, well, we'll watch it. And it was some documentary about uh, how this doctor had gone to, I think it was like cataract surgery that he had done to correct people's vision. And these people, instead of thanking the doctor, were thanking, you know, Kim Jong-il. And I was like, oh, you're like, what? that's interesting. Is this? this is yeah, interesting. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was so surreal. And I'm uh -huh. like, it, suddenly something snapped and it became real to me. Um, you know, not to get melodramatic or anything, <laughs> but I was actually, at the time, I had met my first love who was the son of a refugee. I won't say from what country. It was okay. not North Korea. It was some <laughs> other country. Okay. Um, and these refugee issues had become very prominent in my brain mm -hmm. uh, because you know, this person who I adored and who I loved so much, if it had not been for these random aid workers, I never would have met him. Mm. Um, and that was not lost on me. Um, so at the time, after watching that documentary, it was documentary Friday. At the time I was 18 or 19, it was 2010. Um, yeah, I think it was 2010 and yeah. it was a Friday. And I remember my major at the time when I had first enrolled at university was creative writing and acting. Um, I had gone to New York to actually write scripts for video games. Um, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to write, you know, the yeah, next yeah. Bioshock or whatever. Um, and I went to the who is it you go to to change your major? I don't even remember like your the names. Or yeah, yeah, your advisor. Yeah, something right? like your that. Advisor, yeah. Um, and so I the next said, Monday, you, you yeah, no, kidding. I changed my major from oh, just creative like that, writing. Huh? Okay. Oh yeah, and I actually left acting to move to the global studies major, where I concentrated in in North Korean issues. That's fascinating. Wow. It was, wow, it was a, a ride for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite a movie. And that's, you don't remember the name of the film either. You know, I, I totally don't because it was like, I watched this mm. one documentary and yeah. it lit this like forest fire in my YouTube recommendations yeah, or yeah. And whatever just, YouTube, yeah. you know, the algorithm wasn't quite as good back then. But mm. um, I, it was funny because I, 
saw a documentary. I remember the name of this one. If you want to watch it, I think it's still on Vimeo. It's called uh, Soul Train, haha, <laughs> but it's like S E, you know, yes. yeah, Soul yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. like, yeah. <laughs> like soul searching, um, like soul everyone's searching, yeah, like yeah. we got blog. soul, <laughs> yeah. you know, a million bad X plot blog puns. Mm. Um, but it was funny because. I saw in that documentary, Tim Peters, who later ended up yep. becoming my number one mentor ah. in front of the statue of brothers, um, which is the famous statue uh, at the Korean War Memorial where there's a Northern Korean soldier and a Southern, Southern Korean soldier. Mm-hmm. Allegedly a true story, two brothers who met on the battlefield on opposite sides and ran and embraced each other. So there's mm, a statue of that. Mm. Um, yeah at the war memorial so tim was in front of it in this documentary and i thought i'm gonna go to korea on study abroad and see that statue and i did and i went and lo and behold uh four years later i was meeting tim peters at his volunteer meeting not far from the exact place that statue is at yeah um and that i met him and helping hands korea and and son me and in, in who is his wife and uh and they're the founders 20, of that company of that yeah foundation. helping hands yeah. korea yeah. yeah that's a pretty yeah yeah i met them in 2014 um you know i had volunteered with liberty in north korea pretty extensively i, I wasn't like a paid employee but back then liberty in north korea was this kind of tiny startup <laughs> charity so i was a volunteer mm-hmm. i worked at momongcho school for um you know north korean defector kids I did a lot of volunteering, but Tim and Sunmi and what they do at Helping Hands, like really that stuck with me. I mean, they're my number one heroes in the world, so to speak. So what do they do? What does Helping Hands Korea actually, like what is their goal? What is their mission? My dog keeps looking at me, sorry. (laughs) No problem, my dog is next to me too. Um, Well, Helping Hands Korea, what they do, and just to be clear, I'm actually not an employee. I'm just a very involved volunteer there. Uh Um, They basically finance and fundraise for and assist with North Koreans in crisis, especially those hiding in China. So there's, it's hard to get statistics on the refugee issue, but the estimate is that about 80% of North Korean women who cross into China end up sexually trafficked. Um, Again, that was a number from a long time ago. I'm not sure if there's been a study since then still wow Um, okay but you know what tim and sunmi do through their ngo helping hands is they help these women escape through various networks um into southeast asia okay and then from there you know once they're safe in southeast asia they can come through the whole process to be vetted and then come here to south korea or potentially you know a third country you know depending okay it's such a terrible it's such a i did some uh writing about north korean refugees when i was in toronto and it's such a a peerless journey and then when they get to toronto uh most of them are not able to stay there because of the third country rules that they have for immigration because most of them go there after going coming from south korea and then they find they can't live here and then they try to live somewhere else and those countries don't accept them because Mm -hmm. or they tend to lie and say they haven't been to uh because they get there through other North Koreans or right. brokers, and it's a really right. awful system that they don't they don't have right protections. They don't have people helping them other than uh, Mr. Peters and his wife. Yeah. Sunmi? Sunmi? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I have to say, I'm not a religious person myself, mm-hmm. uh, and believe it or not, I was actually very hesitant uh, as a you know pretty staunch atheist to to get Mm. involved with a charity that was not like secular in nature yeah um but i i was so impressed with how tim and sunmi really cultivated these weekly meetings to be so open to anyone Mm -hmm. of any religious or political walk of life and Mm -hmm. I, i you know full disclosure i'm like a Bernie Sanders voting, you know, like <laughs> contrapoints worshiping, yeah. like pretty. But you didn't, you didn't feel person. that that was part of the 
uh, a stipulation for getting help, the religious end of it, it, what, it wasn't something that was drilled into these meetings or this organization? Uh, no, not at all. I, I don't think um, that I've never gotten that vibe, That's which cool. is why okay. I actually continued to stay on board. Sure, because sure. Um, I, I, I think um, their, their philosophy is more leaning towards like, we're doing this in the name of Christ. And you can do with that what you please. I mean, it's not it's not the soup, soap, and salvation of your. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I you know, and I can't speak to that as a representative of Mm -hmm. Helping Hands Korea. I mean, you would have to talk to Tim to get bigger Mm -hmm. insight Mm -hmm. on that. But as far as I understand, it's not, um, you know, this sort Mm -hmm. of well, if you want help, you know, right. You have to read this Bible. Like they don't force people to like read the Bible or anything. It's sort of, but the priority is on um, single mothers with children, um, people with disabilities uh, and the elderly. Um, Unfortunately, you do get a lot of sometimes like grandmothers with, you know, young kids. Um, Mm. There's a lot of like broken family structures that people are often dealing with. Um, Mm. Because if you are just if any listeners aren't aware, um, the problem in China is that North Koreans are considered illegal migrants. So if they're caught, and sometimes the Chinese government at various points has offered different financial rewards for reporting them, oh. they can be sent back to North Korea. Ooh. Obviously, Ooh. that can mm. mean a lot of things. Um, if you have money for bribes, it can mean something not as harsh, but if you are, you know, in a serious case that can get you thrown in a concentration camp, forced abortions, torture, Sure. I mean, just like stuff out of like cartoon nightmares. I mean, that is the real, as much as the media really likes to demonize and kind of almost caricature, uh, North Korea in a certain sense, um, I mean, some of that is real, you know, I mean, it, some of that really is like Nazi level mm-hmm. um, atrocities. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's, it, it is very dangerous the way that a lot of people sort of amp up this uh, rhetoric of like, oh, the North Koreans, they're so brainwashed. And like, if you do anything in North right. Korea, like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of my North Korean peers would be like oh yeah we would like secretly watch you know like a movie <laughs> on a smuggled in computer like they're a lot more aware of the outside world than you know we i think, think most we westerners yeah. right right yeah. i mean they're not they get it you know like they have smuggled in computers to watch like a little dvd or mm-hmm. i think and again, it's the country is a black box. We don't really know. But my impression is that many North Koreans, especially the younger generation, are quite aware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And that's usually through like black markets. They'll acquire, you know, media or there was a campaign to get USB drives into rural North Korea to kind of yep. show them um, all of Wikipedia, the internet was on those. Right. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, I thought that that initiative was quite interesting. So, mm. yeah, it's and, and you know, I, I'm just a bit hesitant because I know so many North Korean like millennials and young people. And I, I think a lot of people have a stereotype in their head that they're Absolutely. this shivering victim of ptsd and they need right. welfare and like they just want to go to the mall and like yeah. watch a movie man sure <laughs> kind of like the yeah. the ussr before it fell too right like what was it that really broke it down was jeans and coca-cola yeah. were some of the biggest weapons Levi's, like, right or Levi's, Levi's, yeah. yeah yeah um, right so yeah. you know what do you do and how are you helping the north koreas here on jeju such the farthest point in south korea from north korea <laughs> Well, uh, we are actually here. I'm located in the global education city because, you know, we all got to make money and I'm on the (laughs) SAT AP tutor money train because we all got to eat, right? Right. Um, You know, I I love teaching the AP. I'm just such a Mm. literature nerd, you know? So I'm in the global education city and, uh, you know, I 
not to get too much into my backstory, but I left Seoul uh, to come to the GEC to teach to pay off the remainder of my lovely U.S. Mm. student loan debt. Twenty-four thousand dollars left, you guys. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> you know, here's your diploma and here's your debt anchor. Good mm. luck. You yeah, know? Have fun. Right. Have fun. <laughs> um, but leaving Catacombs Seoul right. was excruciating. How... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was, you know, I had actually left the best job I ever had because yeah. I wanted to go to Helping Hands Korea's volunteer meetings where people would prep. Um, I actually have an example. Oh, yeah. Do show us you. This is what you're basically doing now. So we definitely want to hear mm -hmm. more about this. Right. So for audio listeners, I know you can't see it, but I'm holding a bag of spinach seeds. Okay. So this Quite is from a sizable G Market bag, yeah. It's yeah, purple so, and green. Um, yeah. It's 500 grams, and I'll buy okay. just like out of my own pocket a whole bunch of these. Um, and then we will take these at the okay. Soul Catacombs meeting and put them into these tiny plastic Daiso oh. bags. Okay. So you're basically separating the big the big seeds and. Did you call those Daiso bags? Yes, yeah, she did. Daiso, the like Daiso, yeah. the you know, dollar store. Yeah, yeah, so cheap, speak. cheap little yeah. Ziploc bags. Mm. Um, and we'll scoop them in there. Okay. And these packets will actually be packets. sent into rural North Korea. How, how are you getting them there? Well, that is actually mm. outside secret? my wheelhouse. Okay, I was um, gonna say, it's a secret, it's a secret, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. you know, it, it's sort of, uh, it's like, it's got, it's got, you know, kind of the layers of the onion, right? There's yes. people on the outside, you know, like me and Tim, we can't do like the James Bond stuff. No, okay. Like yeah. we're blonde. Well, yeah. Tim was a blonde, but he's an older guy now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. He's, you know, a blue eyed, older white guy. And mm. I'm like a blonde, blue eyed, tall woman just and yes. it, it you can't have these people doing incredibly sensitive things and like right right you know different countries that would be because you would just attract so much attention um so basically what what we do is we'll pack tim will package these if you're in seoul the meeting is near samgakji yok exit two okay. um every tuesday at 7 p.m yeah and we'll post so, this yeah 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 i can totally show notes everything yeah. Yeah. Um, the meeting has been going on for several years, but these will all be sent into rural North Korea. And, you know, I quit the best job I ever had. Shout out to uh, Practical English Application <laughs> Institute in Daichi. Go Dennis, go Jay, love you guys. Um, you know, I quit the greatest job I ever had because I had to choose between my job and being able to attend these meetings in Seoul. And what, what was so interesting, I mean, because at these meetings, you're literally just separating seeds into little bags. What else was right. happening there that you felt so taken with? Well, one of the big things I, I think I really loved and, and still love about the catacombs meeting, uh, because I actually ended up opening catacombs Jeju right, as a volunteer right. down right. here in the GEC. Right. Um, Which is how we found I, out about you, yeah. Right, right. So we run our workshop every every other Sunday from okay. ten to noon. I know that's church time, but <laughs> it's also the day on time I'm not teaching. So yeah. right. sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I try and recreate that spirit that Tim and Sunmi are so good at cultivating. Right. And it's really a sense of camaraderie, and it's very intergenerational. You know, I feel like, especially now um, in the post-pandemic world, I do think sort of like a generational segregation mm. is mm. a big problem. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, There's a hundred year uh, divide be between my 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 wife and her parents. It's, oh it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And catacombs is in a small art gallery, and it's this space where an older conservative. Korean professor, you know, from one of these sky schools can meet mm -hmm. like a excited young <laughs> army guy, you know what I mean, from the U.S. base back when the U.S. base was still there. Uh -huh. 
um, you know, or so it really pulled just, in a lot, a lot of different people. Were they, oh, yeah. were these meetings yeah. in Seoul quite um, popular? Were there, you know, were there a lot of seats in the butts, a lot of butts in the seats? Uh, well, you know, it, it's funny because I've been, I left for Jeju in, in December, 2020. That was when I moved right. here. Um, and it, I kind of saw catacombs go through like waves. That makes sense. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Throughout mm -hmm. the years, um, there would be times, you know, where it was a little quiet, but then other times there'd be so many people there. Yeah. You know, in the before times, before <laughs> the COVID. Oh, you know, yeah. There'd be that must so have... many people there. So, I mean, no free seats. So, right, it, right. I, it depends on you know, the, the season, so sure. to speak. So where can, where did pe if people can go to it here, where can they, where should they go? What time? And so when? the Jeju, you know, Tim was the best because he knew how important catacombs was to me. And he said, you know, Rachel, why don't you just do catacombs on Jeju? Because he mm -hmm. knew I had to take this job to pay mm -hmm. off what was a $56,000 <laughs> student loan debt, which is now a $24,000 student loan That's debt. That's an accomplishment. So, I like, she said, feels very proud of this, yes. I'm, you know, I got my Dave Ramsey book I read for two hours today. <laughs> I'm ready, people. I'm ready to be debt free. Well, you know what, um, uh, Rachel, let us cut you off for just mm -hmm. one second because we have a yeah. couple more questions, but we're gonna just take a quick break. Yeah. And, and we'll we're gonna be yeah. right back with you. Yes, yeah, so Rachel, we were just talking before the break. I think one of the things that's most fascinating listening to you talk about your history, what I'm really curious about is you mentioned a couple of times, you know, um, that you left a good job, something that was taking financially taking care of your own personal life. What about this organization, Catacombs? What about this really has kept you, you know, involved throughout all these years where you even you know, we're taking a loss to your own financial benefits. What is so special about well, this? I know you that's know, a big I question, think, but yeah. I, I, I understand completely. And I think it's a good question. Um, I absolutely attribute that to Tim and Sunmi okay. themselves okay. Uh, because it, you know, I think a lot of people would like to do this work, um, but they are just the most fantastic people, you know, I've ever met. Okay. And like both of them, it's very interesting because they come at life from such a different philosophical framework than I do. Everything's through a Christian lens. Whereas for me, you know, everything might be Not through so like a feminist <laughs> lens or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, or like a queer lens mm -hmm. or, a, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they, but they just connect with people on such a deep level. And, you know, I, I think that is what makes Helping Hands Korea and Liberty in North Korea, like really exceptional in this. Um, so it's that connection the, you had with people that really kept you coming right. and staying through this organization. Right. Okay. And I think um, okay. that's, you know, the same with Liberty in North Korea, to be fair, uh, I would have stayed with them if I had stayed in the United States, but sure. since coming here, um, you know, I think there's also just sometimes people really uh, are, are good at getting all the jigsaw pieces to fit together yes. within like a community and an, and an organization. And 100%. If I can do that half as well as Tim does <laughs> on the mainland, I'm hoping we can build it down here in Jeju. So, so when you were doing, Daryl has the same question, when you were in Seoul and doing these meetings, has it always been seeds? And why? No, actually, you know, when when I first came in 2014, it was because uh, it was kind of a place for like North Korea human rights activists to hang out and talk and eat cookies and drink tea. Okay. Right? <laughs> but with the seeds, uh, one of our members actually, I think I wrote a, an article about the Huffington Post about this. I think it was he inherited like a chestnut farm oh. at some point. And uh, he said, well, I live in Korea, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this chestnut farm. And Tim thought like, oh, well, are those chestnuts just like rotting on the ground? I mean, can we do something here? So that was where we started prepping wow. vegetable seeds. And That's random. That, Jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, 
And wait, so muscles. what did you do with the chestnut seeds? Were they ever part of the the the, the gift giving over the border? Was that or the, you, you know I. I don't actually now I need know. To, Rachel, now I need to know. You're going to have so, to get that answer for us. My question was, <laughs> why seeds? Out. Yeah. And yeah. to more to that, why do they need seeds? Well, one of the primary reasons uh, when we launched the program was that people had like individual plots of land that okay. they could cultivate in rural areas. The other in thing North is that Korea, there's weird. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the we have ways of getting them in, obviously, that are surgical aid, uh, essentially. It has no government interference. It's completely okay. underground. And this is, okay. you know, it, it specifically targets areas where people are most in need. And most North Koreans do have base agricultural skills. Okay. Like I took a bunch of North Korean kids like sweet potato digging as a field trip once. And I'm from New York City. I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've got my little coffee in my hand and I'm like, there's sweet potatoes in this field. <laughs> and these little North Korean kids are running around just like pulling sweet potatoes out of, out of the dirt as far as I'm concerned. And I just like, they have these incredible sort of background ambient agricultural skills. Uh, so, you know, this one little packet is. It, and for the audio listeners, it's it's probably like two centimeters by two centimeter yeah. packet. Yeah, it's, um, it's tiny, and you know this this can feed like a village yeah. of people. Yeah, I mean every one of these seeds is going to turn into like an actual spinach plant. Right, which is pretty amazing. Right, um, right. You know when you think about it. And do you? This is also just just sticking to the idea. We can't we can't keep talking forever, which I I would love to, and I know Daryl would as well. But then let's just talk. Keep talking about the seeds. Do you switch the seeds different seasons, or is it? Do you know which seeds they prefer that they're you know they're 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 wanting to get from you? I mean, is there a plan to this? Yeah, there is somewhat we do get feedback okay. from people inside okay. North Korea so okay. we are we have a wide variety of requests for things but all of them are culturally relevant and if they're not culturally relevant they were often requested okay. again I don't talk to these people I don't know I'm <laughs> You're just the fun packing the bags, and the <laughs> packing the bags right so okay um it, we get kind of like requests and they're okay. all like high nutrient foods, sure. like corn, okay. peas. Sweet potato. Um, sweet potato? <laughs> uh, I don't nope. know if we've ever done sweet oh, potato okay. actually, <laughs> but you know, there's kind of a back and forth. As far as I know, there has been something of a crackdown on the private plots of land okay. in recent years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, everyone wants to donate to the underground rescues, right? Because mm -hmm. that's like really cool and everyone wants it to be like yes. a Hollywood movie. Yes. But the problem is very few refugees are actually able to trickle out of North Korea. Right. Because that border, especially during COVID, like it is tight. Forget it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much the more that goes along with that too. Daryl, before we even... I, we're thinking about asking you to come on we were discussing it and it's more to it than just rescuing like uh, North Koreans don't have an amazing life in some of the countries that they go to I mean there's more to it so I think that's what really made us fascinated with the seed program because it's like you said it's not this Hollywood let's give money to you know this you know this this something that maybe isn't going to work out so well in the future but these seeds seems like it's an ongoing, constant uh, source of, where am I going with this, Daryl? Constant source of- uh, It's a food. It's a yeah. constant source of help. Well, yeah, aid. Yeah, right. that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, right. I like the and, idea of you thinking know, we of the James Bond guy going up there with seeds <laughs> and running across like, wah! Seeding Johnny, Johnny Appleseed. Here going go. <laughs> yeah. The Korean Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, we do have to think about the people yes. still inside the country. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. It, and I have to say, I know it's popular and, you know, everyone's bandwagoning on it, but <laughs> gosh, Squid Game, thank you for some like North Korean defector representation. Oh, yes, uh, that was you know, very I, interesting. And she's super famous now. That. that was, that was yes. quite the thing. She brought attention to Jeju. She's the one who says she's Jeju. Jeju. Yeah. She, yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole, yeah. we should have you on the podcast and just talk about that. Cause that was a whole nother thing. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I gotta say, I, you know, I actually don't even have a Netflix subscription. I admit I am completely <laughs> disconnected from like most pop culture, but I got to that Squid Game show and I just loved it. And I'm like, finally, there's more. Yes. There, there's some Agreed. representation of life not being so great yeah. for right. many defectors. That is um, so important, I think. Yeah. Well, because, and just recently, we do need to wrap this up, but just recently, the North Defector left South Korea and went back to North yes. Korea because his life wasn't exactly what presumably presumably we don't really know but you know yeah so it's it's it is I, I really am impressed with what you all have going on mm. that like you said it's it's outside the spotlight of these attention getting things it's really mm. focused on making sure life can go on in a comfortable way for other people yeah now now before we right. we get to our Jeju 5 um, oh, I forgot we're doing this. Okay, I have we to. Go. We have to talk JG5. about five. Yeah, yes. the JG five. Um, you sold the picture, didn't you? She what? Sold the oh, picture. The NFT. The oh, no, NFT. Rachel. No, yep. what is happening? <laughs> we, I, we don't know. Okay. Right before this segment, right before we talked to you, I did a segment where I was talking about Jeju Island becoming an oh, NFT no. place of virtual real estate, and it makes no sense yes. to any of us. And she was talking about people getting like. You know, got to take down that photo uh, yeah. on Instagram or Facebook People because that was Twitter an NFT. Are, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you sold something? Can you please tell us the famous picture, which you have, of course, seen that you did I've not know that was by Rachel Stein? What? Oh, my goodness. So, okay. So I was at the Seoul Queer Culture Festival in, okay. I want to say, like, 2017, I think it was. And I took a picture of uh, this guy dressed as Jesus in <gasps> front of a bunch of protesters. <laughs> that was your picture? So, yes. That's your photo. I know this photo. <laughs> so, I, so, so for audio listeners, it was, um, yeah, we'll uh, it post was, it. Uh, yeah, it yeah, was a we guy can... dressed as Jesus oh my in front gosh. of protesters. Actually, can we who post were it? Saying... Oh, oh, right. Who, oh, right. Continue, continue. Okay, continue. now we're, we're all like, yeah. no, 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 no. They, um, these these protesters had a sign. It said like uh, homosexuality, homosexuality is sin. Is sin. Yeah. Return to and Jesus. And he said, "I'm cool with it." He, he, so the guy dressed as Jesus had a rainbow sign but, that said, "I'm cool with it" in mm. front of the protesters. Mm. Um, so I, you know, I I I am a photographer. I love doing photography as a hobby. But I remember it was raining that day, and I didn't want my DSLR to get rained on so i was like oh i'll just leave it at home so i pulled out my it was like an iphone 5s oh, wow. or just something like, yeah, yeah. I just like took a picture and i went to the subway station after the queer culture fest i'm like decked out and like rainbow i had a pokemon everywhere. trainer shirt <laughs> on you know I, it was a great day i was going to the subway at city hall and i uploaded it to facebook um Kurt Atchin, the DJ, messaged me and said, hey, can I put your photo on, in I think it was Instagram or Twitter or something, yeah. I, I don't remember what outlet it was, but I really limit my social media, I, I, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan, to be honest, um, and I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care. The next day, it was I woke up, and my phone said, you have 99 plus new Facebook notifications. <laughs> and I thought like the war was on with North Korea. I'm like, something <laughs> happened, like we're all gonna die. <laughs> like, because well, sometimes that photo, North Korea, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, What's you know, a, but wait, 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 wait. You have to get to the important part. Did you just sell it as an NFT? Well, I tried to, uh, I made an NFT of the meme and I tried to sell it actually to raise funds for a charity for an yeah. LGBT youth homeless shelter yeah. in Seoul. Yeah. But, you know, creating an NFT is not. We don't free. even know what it is. You don't um, have to go. We, you can skip this part. We don't even. I, I assume worry. there's like cauldrons we and don't need witches to, yeah. involved in yeah. making NFTs. Magic well, dust. It, yeah. But, but there's did something you... uh, called a gas fee where you have to actually, you, it, you have to pay to make the oh, NFT. Okay. Ah. Um, so <laughs> I made the Thank NFT. You. 
we did get some bids on it, but it was for like $120, which yeah. is basically what it cost me to, to like the make the <laughs> NFT. So you're holding, so, you're holding out for, you're holding out for a higher. I am. I'm going to hold out Good. for a higher uh, price because I, you Very know, cool. that charity um, doesn't have enough money to keep the shelter open 24 yep. seven. And obviously like yep. transphobia, homophobia are major issues and I and you guys yeah. had a great podcast yeah. about like mm. those issues in Korea and yeah. actually before I was a North Korea activist I earned my battle stripes as a gay rights activist okay. that was my first uh arena it's in your blood hey it's so, in my blood how so can we promote wanna... this yeah how can we promote and try to get more funds for like the auction of this nft then if you're still trying to fund uh, well, it. Well, I think I would have to put it back on auction. I've mm. been talking with my friend, Noe Alonzo, who's a photographer from an expat photographer in Korea, who's made some money with NFTs of his artwork. Um, you know, I'm probably going to talk to like Raphael Rashid if I put of it course. back oh, on, because yes. yeah, I know we, he promoted it. it. Mm. Um, just kind of like getting some soul people together. Yeah, and, we, we uh, would definitely love to help that. Once, yeah. once please reach out oh, to us. Oh, I and, would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Individually you know, and because, the podcast, of course. And we would like to oh, I would put love that it. photo on our thing, but I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Who, who owns this <laughs> photo? photo? <laughs> you still oh, own So I actually, I released, um, I am, I was the copyright owner, but I have actually released the copyright into the public domain. Oh, sweet. Oh. I mean, so that's we'll, yeah, so of, we'll, we'll post it so yeah, that people can yeah. know where we're talking because it's iconic. Anyone, especially, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. No, it's famous. I told you, I, I, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. I, as soon as you, I was like, oh my god. Okay. And you still do not know what an NFT I is, know, we but saw, we have like a minute other. and a half, so let's go through the JJ okay. five. Are you ready, Rachel? Which are five questions okay. that we're gonna ask you about JJ, and you got to tell us quickly, quickly. So, okay, where on JJ do you go to get away? Olegir. Okay. Olegir. Olegir. Okay. What is your go-to beverage of choice when you go to the marks? We know not everybody's going to drink alcohol. So Tea's any, fine. what is your, you know, yeah. what's your top boom, boom, boom. What's your top beverage of choice? Red wine. Hey, mm. from the marks. I like it. The I, you know, I'm a cheap wine girl. <laughs> <laughs> Next number three. Hala, coast or autumns? Which do you prefer? Shop day beach. <laughs> So the coast. coast. The coast. So the coast. <laughs> yeah. What, in very short answer, what's the best thing about Jeju? Two sentences or less. Your Ole trails. Okay, I love it. You're <laughs> on it. Okay. <laughs> what's something you know? Uh, what's uh, what's something you know about Jeju that most others won't? Uh, <laughs> if you want to teach AP or SAT, Jeju is the place to do it. <laughs> All right. You want to teach the AP or SAT exam? Oh. Oh, no. There's, oh, wait. That is five, but we have a six. We have a minute, so Ooh, go with it. A bonus it. round. Yeah, a bonus, bonus round. round. Okay. If there is one thing you would change about Jeju, what would it be? The air pollution that sometimes, like, wafts down from the mainland. <laughs> Massively. All yeah. right, Rachel. Thank you, what Rachel. an that interview. Was great. Thank you. Yeah. That, uh, we know that was so, so much. much got shared there. Hopefully we can have you back on again and yeah. really dive into some of these more complicated issues. Mm. Right. Oh, absolutely. And so our next meeting, just if you're watching Please, this now, yes. is going to be January 30th in mm. the Ongi Cafe okay. in the Jeju GEC. The, so it's right near the Ongi beautiful Experience cafe. Center yep. bus yep. stop. Yep. um easy we'll parking just for everyone to know easy, easy parking, parking. Yeah. um you know right off the 151 it's every other sunday that's what i was just about to from say from 10 to 12 okay. so it'll go the 30th of january and then it will be again the 13th of february and the 27th of okay. february awesome thank you rachel thank, it was a pleasure thank you so much, thank you so much. all right yeah. ciao that was uh rachel stein everybody that was a fantastic interview. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Rachel. That was, we'll have to have that, you on again. That, we absolutely have to have her on again because it was just so, that was like such a whirlwind of mm. like so many things were going on and, uh, you know, we just don't have enough time to, but I we do need to talk more about some of these things that were mentioned. I'm psyched about that NFT. 
like raising funds. <laughs> we don't, need, through we don't it even for, know what it is, but I'm yeah, psyched of the, the, uh, the possibilities of it. Yeah, we don't. Un- I don't even. Wow. I still don't know what it is. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyways, yeah. there we go. So Let's we're back. Showing our age. We'll be back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we are back. Really cool. We have we some back. really amazing interviews set up. We have oh, a uh, an amazing reporter coming on in our mm-hmm. next podcast. A historian. A historian slash reporter slash. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's everything. Bunch of hat- hats yeah. on his. Head we got a muralist that's coming on. We're going to have a surfer. Another We're going to have, yeah, we got, we, we got, got a, some things. We got, we got you, things as, as always, if you ever have any suggestions mm. or you think, you know what, this person would make a great interview, man, our our DMs are always open. Mm. Slide right in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like, follow, subscribe, all that always. internet Please. mumbo jumbo. We need, we need, we yeah, need it. Share. Just because it's, you know, yeah. the way the world works. We need it. Yeah. And, um, you know, until next time, I'm Daryl. She's Alexis. Music's by uh, Jason Lisko. Art's by Sarah Hodgkiss. And uh, till next time. Till next time. See ya. Bye.